Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com. Now you may have seen the video I did the other day where I was at an event in London, actually in the ice bar, which, you know, side note is a pretty cool place to be, uh, where WD were unveiling the new WD Black SN750. Essentially, this is the fastest NVMe consumer drive out there on the market, at least until maybe even Samsung come along and kind of, you know, show off their new 970 Evo Plus. But until then, the WD Black SN750, at least on paper, is the fastest drive in the world. So we thought, why don't we get three of them and make them even faster? It's time to do some raid. So what I have here is three WD Black SN750s. These are the one terabyte models. Now, when you actually look at the specs, obviously speeds differ depending on the capacity. And WD have actually kind of taken that one step further. So what they have got is a two terabyte capacity that will be coming soon, as well as a version of this with a heatsink that they've kind of collaborated with EK, which again, will be coming soon, probably around March time, hopefully. So when you look at the one terabyte drives, in terms of read and write speeds, we've got 3,470 megabytes a second on the read speed and 3000 megabytes a second on the write speed which is blistering fast now what they've actually done with these drives is they haven't really changed too much from the 2018 edition which admittedly did look a lot lot different to this it had kind of a white sticker on it so if you are looking to differentiate between the two that's going to do it from at least from an aesthetic standpoint what they did is they carried on using the same 3d nantech uh, architecture they use the same controller but they've actually just kind of tweaked the firmware so what they've managed to do is kind of eke out that little bit more performance just by kind of fiddling around with the firmware so who knows maybe there'll be a drive in sort of a year's time where it will be even faster based on the same thing cuss cutting measures who knows but if it's not broke don't fix it and i guess really all wd are doing is competing with the likes of samsung and other brands out there to really try and you know get that crown of being the fastest drive in the world so what i've done is i've built up a, a rig this is a, an x299 based system 7820x uh, i've got some team group memory in there got some rgb going on because obviously that's going to help with the speeds because rgb makes everything faster right 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 so what we have here is uh, the system ready to go. Now I am gonna obviously have to power it down, take the graphics card out because it has got three M.2 slots on here, but to get to it, you have to take the graphics card off. A Little bit annoying, but kind of what, what can you do? So I guess really the first step is to do that. Then we're gonna go into Windows. So I have got a um, WD Blue 500 gig 2.5 inch drive SSD sitting down here which has got windows on there so this is going to be my boot drive because i don't want to take away from kind of the speed that we're going to get on the drives through windows and things like that so i want to leave these completely bare and have them as secondary drives in raid um, so we are obviously going to do raid zero uh, just for a speed sort of purpose we're going to do it within windows and then we're also going to do a hardware raid because there should be a difference between the two now for anyone actually asking the question, what is the point of this? There is literally no point in this video whatsoever. I just wanted to do it really for shits and giggles. I've got three WD black drives. They're stupid fast. How sort of how fast are they gonna be when we put them in RAID zero? There is only one way to find out. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing that we wanted to do is obviously after installing everything and booting back up again was going into Windows and making sure that all three drives were kind of available as independent drives. That way at least we had kind of something to, to go off. So uh, once we've done that, we can open up Crystal Disk Mark, you can see that there's nothing there. So uh, we've got to create the volumes. So if we do that and do it to that one. I just want to show you guys that you know all three of these drives are getting kind of the speeds that they're that they're meant to be getting so close crystal disk mark reopen it and now we have d e and f so really i'm only looking for kind of the sequential 32 um speeds so if i run that it will take a little while and then we should see sort of typical numbers of you know what i went through earlier so 3470 megabytes a second on the read and about 3000 megabytes a second on the right so you can see we're not really too far away from kind of where was it expecting to be 
let's just wait for the right to kind of you know pick up and do what he's got to do there after the read has settled i mean you're never going to get advertised numbers these you have to remember are i guess best case scenarios so a bit like when you look at a car and they they mention the miles per gallon it's always done in a wind tunnel and under certain circumstances and you know things like that so either way though 3264.7 i don't think that's anything to really grumble at uh right speed so 2879.6 I'm going to open up another instance of Crystal Dismark uh, just so I can go to the next drive because as I say I want to show you guys that you know we are getting all of the speeds that we're meant to. I'm only actually going to run one test otherwise we are going to be here all day and frankly you know we don't want to do that. So again sequential and I'll open up another Crystal Dismark just so we can do obviously the third drive once that one's done. I am going to wait for, for obviously the second drive to be done. Set that to one as well. So similar speeds, a little bit faster, I guess, 3272. Uh, it's just preparing the sequential write speed now. Let's see if we can get any better than the 2883.8. And the write speed is coming out 2886. So it seems like the second drive is, I don't know, maybe that little bit better. And then the third drive, we're gonna run the tests on that. And again, look for the sequential read and the sequential write speeds. Let's see if we can do any better than the second drive. I mean, these, this being a better speed than that may not come down to the drive itself. It may come down to the M.2 slot that it's in. It may just have a better contact. It may, you know, I mean, this one's even better, 3,372. We're getting closer to kind of them advertised numbers. And then looking at the write speed, we're basically bang on the money. So whatever drive is in that third slot is definitely uh, definitely doing better. So uh, they're the speeds that we've got. Um, we're now gonna delete the volumes and set up a RAID partition. Um, I'm not gonna show this on camera purely because it's gonna take a little while to do. So let's jump back to it when that's all done. Okay, so it's finally finished. Uh, as you can see, we have a new volume now, D, D and D. So we have three dynamic disks and just for kind of shits and giggles now, uh, obviously you can see before we had speeds of 3264, 3272 and 3372. So around sort of 3300 as an average. Then on the right speeds we had an average of let's say 2900. So one test on the D drive which is now showing as 2.7 terabytes because these are all one terabyte drives and the way that Windows does everything, yada yada yada. Uh, so we're going to run the sequential tests uh, again. So it's just preparing the sequential read test. I'm not expecting lightning fast results. I am expecting obviously better than what we have here, but not what you'd get from a hardware raid, which is what we're actually going to do next. So there we go. So read speed. So with three drives in uh, RAID 0, we've gone from, like I say, an average of, let's say, 3,300 megabytes a second now to 4,870, and a write speed average of 2,900 to 4,429.6. So, you know, pretty good results, but not kind of what, you know, I'm after. So I'm going to delete the volume now. So it's just taking me all that time to format it and it literally deletes the volume like that. So now what we're gonna do is head into the BIOS and we're gonna uh, have a look at potentially, you know, putting this into hardware RAID and seeing if we can get better results than 4,870 and 4,429. Let's get into the BIOS. Okay, so we're into the BIOS and the first thing we wanna do, this is an ASRock um, X299 Tai Chi XE. The reason I chose that was it's kind of, you know, one of the best boards that they have. So I knew having three drives would be no problem at all. So um, what we want to do is generally this is on legacy. So what you want to do, and this is normally on AHCI. So SATA mode selection, you want to change from AHCI to Intel RST premium raid mode. And then launch storage Opron policy, you want to change from legacy to UEFI. And for some reason, it's showing that one of our drives is unsupported, which is not good. That's not good at all. So we have two drives which are enabled. Uh, generally, they're disabled as standard. So M.2.2 and M.2.3. The only reason I can ever see that M.2.1 would actually you know, be unsupported is if it was a SATA drive and I was using a SATA connector for the SSD. But I can't see why that's an issue but I will try and disconnect the SATA SSD and see if that makes any difference. So I'll save that and do that. 
Okay, so we're back into the BIOS. Let's see if that made any difference and it didn't. So it looks like either we have an issue with one of the drives or an issue with the whole kind of setup that I've got going on here. So I guess really we're gonna have to do raid with two drives as opposed to three, which is a bit frustrating. May even be giving me an indication as to why the Windows results kind of wasn't where I was expecting it to be. We wanna go back to advanced and we we'll actually see that there's a new option here now for Intel Rapid Storage Technology. So we wanna go into there. As I say, for some reason it is only picking up the two drives. So this is really annoying. I can only assume that maybe one of the drives is faulty, which is really frustrating and Western Digital are probably gonna hate me for even publishing this video, but what can you do? Uh, so let's call it Black Raid. That sounds a bit odd. Black WD Raid. Uh, so we're gonna go with Raid Zero, Stripe. You can obviously do Raid One uh, Mirror. And then you get to choose what drives you wanna use. So I wanna use this drive and this drive, which are the two PCI Express drives. Um, then it tells you what your capacity is gonna be. You can obviously create like a partition or make it a smaller size, what strip size you want, and then create the volume. So now we have two drives, Black WD Raid, Raid Zero, Stripe, 1.8 terabytes uh, normal. So, if you go onto that, it will just kind of go through and tell you exactly what ones, uh, what drives you're using and a little bit more about everything. So once we've done that, we can save the configuration, we can head into Windows and see what kind of speeds we get. And hopefully it's better than the, uh, the Windows results that we got, which admittedly were a little lackluster purely because I think there may have been a problem there as well with the third drive. So um, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so now that we're in Windows, we've opened up disk management and this is the really weird thing. So you can see here that we have disk zero, which is reading as 1.8 terabytes. This is our raided kind of volume, but it is still showing disk two completely unallocated. We were able to do a software raid using Windows uh, that included that drive, but for some reason it's, it's just not letting us this time. So we're now gonna create a simple volume because it thinks that this is kind of one drive, even though it's not. So technically this is a hardware raid as opposed to a software raid. If it was a software raid, if Windows ever went corrupt or anything like that, then essentially you would lose the whole kind of purpose of the raid. And if you were running your operating system from that particular drive uh, or drives in a software raid, then potentially you could lose all of your data. In a hardware raid, obviously you are a little bit more protected. So this is just gonna sit there and format for a little while. Once that's done, we'll come back, run Crystal Dismark and see exactly what results we get. Hopefully, like I say, it's gonna be better. Okay, so we're back in Windows and what I wanted to do was obviously bring up what we've already done on the right hand side. So just to go for it again, just for kind of clarification purposes, across the three drives, an average of about 3300 megabytes a second on the read speed, an average of about 2900 megabytes a second on the write speed. And when it comes to the kind of software raid, we got it up to 4870 and 4429. So now that we're in hardware raid, Admittedly, only for some reason across two drives instead of the three. So you can see 2.7 terabytes here, 1.8, you might have to zoom in, but 1.8 terabytes here. But in theory, being hardware RAID, we should be getting better results. So fingers crossed, let's do this and see what we get. There we go. So on the read speed, you can see not what I was expecting because admittedly I was expecting three drives and not two. I really don't know what's going on there. That's something I need to kind of look at but 6,312.6 megabytes a second on the read and 5,584.1 megabytes a second on the write speed. So there you have it. Obviously, um, there was some problems. I really can't at the moment figure out why, but I wanted to get this video done purely because the WD Black uh, SN750 is a new drive. So I, I wanted to get some kind of content out there that was kind of you know relevant to what the drive has to offer. And Yes, it's just a, another drive in the grand scheme of things, but I wanted to do something, I guess, a little bit different. So that's where, you know, the raid results came in. There was clearly something buggy. I don't know whether it's one of the drives or whether it's the board. I'm probably more inclined to say it's the board. So I have got other options, which includes using a raid card and things like that at a later date. So let me know in the comments section below if you think that that is something you'd like to see because I, I would honestly love to get maybe four of these drives in and see if we can hit, you know, I don't know, what, what do you think? 10,000 megabytes per second? I mean, who's realistically going to need these sort of speeds? No one, but shits and giggles, fun, laughs, all that kind of jazz. 
why not? If we've got the facility to do it, we want to do it. And that's another thing, I guess. Let us know in the comment section if there's any other kind of crazy stuff that you want to see us do in terms of pushing hardware to its limits and stuff like that. Short of, you know, liquid nitrogen because I don't really have the facility to do that where I am at the moment. But other things, you know, if you have any ideas, please let us know and we will try to do them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next video. I'm going to be tinkering away on this, trying to get something better than that. I mean, that's nothing to really, you know, grumble about, but still, we can do better, right? See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Until, I guess, Samsung sort of show their cards on their new 970 Plus. Uh, it... Fuck's sake. I knew where I was going, but it just didn't happen. <laughs>